The beer du jour for this mailbag is Get Up Off of That Thang, a soulful brown ale from Devil May Care Brewing in Winnipeg. So, the first item in says Terminals. Possibly, we'll see. Oh, yeah. These are red and black crimp ferals. I'm sure my European viewers are very familiar with these, but here in North America, they're much less common. Um, what these are for is putting a crimped end, a firm crimped end over a piece of stranded wire so that the strands don't get all fly away and out of, uh, out of control. And it sort of gives you a predictable thickness when you're going underneath a screw terminal. Specifically this type of uh, clamping screw terminal because uh, as it clamps down, the wires kind of get squashed out and flattened out. But if you've got them uh, in a ferrule, they hold nice and tight and don't move around on you. Which ultimately leads to a more reliable and long-lived connection. And it looks like I got uh, black and red in that size and then red in a slightly larger size. I don't know why I didn't get... Uh, hmm... Maybe there's still some coming. Brand new cable crimp terminal wire connector E7508 tube terminals connector. Um, this is the smaller red ones and they were 99 cents American or dollar 23 Canadian and I got it at auction from this guy Amind or Amind 34. Similar description for the black ones and I got them for the same price at auction. The other red ones, also at auction from the same seller, you must have had a whole bunch of them going at once, uh, cost me just a hair more, dollar four American or dollar twenty nine Canadian. And these are the slightly larger ones. These ones are sized for 18 EWG or 1.5 uh, square millimeter if you use the metric sizes. And the smaller red and black ones are for 20 gauge wire or 0.75 millimeter wire. I don't think there's anything more to say about these other than what we already discussed and what I demonstrated. And yeah, they're available in multiple different colors and multiple different wire gauges. You can also get a variety pack, which is what I initially got. But uh, the reason I chose these red and black ones is just they're the ones that I would tend to use more often. So I figured I'd stock up, especially for that cheap. Next in, we have Nut. Hmm. No, oh, it actually is nuts, but they're not common nuts. These are tea nuts. These are the ones that go into the slots in that aluminum extrusion stuff that uh, 3D printers and CNC machines and stuff like that are commonly made out of. And I think these are, what, M6 or M5 or something? What did I order? I think that says 20 pieces M5. I'll have to check the listing to be sure, though. 50 pieces European T-slot aluminum carbon steel drop-in T-nuts, M3, M4, M5, thread, whatever that means. Uh, got these from Violent NF81. Uh, they cost 617 American back when I bought them, so they've gone up a little bit, but not too much. Free shipping, yay. Yeah, these are also sometimes called hammerhead nuts for, I don't know, I guess that's what some people think the shape looks like. I'm not sure. Anyways, these are, as you might expect, just for uh, expanding or adding on to or accessorizing my 3D printer. Um, yet another case of, I don't know what I'm going to need them for eventually, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to need them. So I'll pick some up for relatively cheap if I can. Next in, we have Network Cable RJ45. Hmm. Okay. I got some of those the last mailbag, I think, didn't I? Oh, these aren't the connectors. These are the boots. I'm sure most of you are fairly familiar with RJ45 connectors. Um, these boots are optional, especially when you're in just your home installation. But they're nice to have because they sort of protect the the um, the thing. Hang on. Yeah, they, they go on like that and just sort of protect the little locking tab. There's one that doesn't have it, and there's one that has the locking tab broken off. Because when you're kind of 
throwing these in and out of a laptop bag or something that gets snagged or when you're fishing them around or fishing a cable around through a wall or over a ceiling or something with it already connected you know sometimes they get snagged so it's just i don't know it's just a cheap little piece of insurance so that you don't have to be repairing your connectors every now and again and it just adds a little bit of class 50 pieces RJ45 Ethernet network LAN cable lead plug and connector cover boot underscore each said. I got these for, yeah, $515. That's what I paid for them or $415 American. Um, I can't remember if they had shipping or not back then. The listing does say that it changed, but I can't find whether I paid shipping or not. It doesn't matter. Uh, these came from HMZK Fungen-4. Nowhere does it say that you can select the colors. It does say that they come in a wide variety of colors and the color that they will ship is random. So I was thinking I might have actually uh, been receiving a random assortment, but that's not the case. I received 50 red ones, which is just fine with me. I didn't need to color code them anyway. Next in, let's take a look at this. It says expansion board module, which is always exciting. If, you know, that's what it is. Very well packaged, whatever's in here. Oh, it's not an expansion board module. It's some slide potentiometers. Even with all that packaging, some of the pins decided to get themselves bent, but I guess that's not too horrible. Looks like these are stereo or dual potentiometers. And they look like, yeah, they've got the little sort of rubbery, plasticky kind of dust shield on there keep crap from falling into them so that's nice and it looks like what did i get here it looks like i got 10 of them or two five packs i'm not sure which does it say what value they are no that's easily determined so first of all are these in fact independent tracks they are okay so then we will go from one of those to one of these and see what we got here yeah, so that's the two fixed uh, ends of the potentiometer. And then this next one in is the wiper. So to see it, moving, uh, you see it moving as I move it there. Okay. So kind of in the middle and it's about half. So that will be a linear potentiometer. If it was an audio taper, a.k.a. logarithmic, 50% uh, movement would not be 50% of the resistance. 10 pieces, 75 millimeter Behringer Mixer B10K Dual Double Straight Slide Potentiometer B103. I uh, got, oh hey, from LS110 1983. Okay, haven't bought anything from them for a while. Um, currently they're selling for 778 American or 966 Canadian with $3.34 shipping. Back when I bought them, it was $7.25 American with a dollar and a quarter shipping, so everything changes uh as always shop around try and find the best deal for yourself doesn't say anything else down here about them they're 75 millimeters long the uh the slider stick handle thing is 15 millimeters high it's dual track aka stereo or just you know two potentiometers and the last thing in does not have any lies on the outside of the box because that came through um, the Mississauga dropshipping warehouse that seems to uh, handle a lot of stuff. Um, whoever this Orange Connects company is, they seem to, uh, handle the shipping. And I've also seen things recently with that Orange Connects logo on the underneath sticker that have come from the UK. So, I don't know who they are exactly. A logistics company, I guess. Get out. Oh, it's a little box of spools of really fine wire. Okay. Ah, that's kind of cool. The box is actually set up as a dispenser. If you just poke out those little holes and poke the wire through it, and you can get your wire dispensed. You leave the box closed. That's pretty neat. How much is on these spools? It's a reasonable amount, I guess. Oh, and it's silicone wire too. Take a look at that. 
It's nice and super flexible. Well, that's neat. I think that's going to come in handy because a guy can never have too much wire. Although I do have a fair bit of it, but that's all kind of salvaged and stuff. It still works, you know, wire's wire, right? 30 AWG, 50 meters in box, flexible silicone wire, tinned copper, super soft, RC cable, UL, whatever UL means. I uh, got this from atop underscore authentic underscore auction, and I did get it at auction for the princely sum of 1240 Canadian or 999 American. Free shipping, of course. There's pretty much nothing else to say about it down here. Soft silicone wire. 300 volt, I think that insulation on that stuff is pretty thin for 300 volts. I trust it for 30 volts. Yeah, RC cable, battery cable. I don't know that I'd use it for battery. Oh, maybe on a low current application. I don't know. But working temperature range, minus 60 C to 200 degrees above Celsius. Wow. I don't think for 12 something Canadian with free shipping compared to these sponsored uh, sellers down here. I think I did reasonably well on that one. Silicon wire tends to be pretty expensive anyway, so if you can find a good deal on it, might as well snag it. Well, that was an interesting assortment again. No big projects or, or anything like that, but lots of uh, shop stock mostly, and uh, possibly some inspiration for a project or two here. Shipping times. The Ferals took 33 days. These RJ45 Boats took 27 days. The T nuts took 42 days. The slide potentiometers took 19 days. Uh, Canadian shipping warehouse, I think. And the wire took 28 days. Also from the Canadian shipping warehouse. Weird. Anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Comments and questions down below as usual. Thanks, as always, to my Patreon supporters for helping to keep my beer fridge full and helping to keep the mailbags rolling in. And also, thanks to my YouTube channel members who have joined recently and are also helping to support this silliness. I appreciate all of you. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.